much, Anna. I am so excited to be here. Thank you all for attending um, this particular presentation tonight. We are so excited to talk to you about what to expect on Travel Day. Travel Day gets me jazzed because it is my wheelhouse. I am the Rustic Pathways Travel Logistics Manager. I manage the staff that your students will meet that will be the face of Rustic Pathways for them on this particular day, our airport coordinators and our flight leaders. Um, I have worked in educational student travel for over a decade um, and with Rustic within this past year, um, helping to hire and train and get uh, these airport coordinators and these flight leaders excited about meeting, greeting, um, and managing this particular travel day for your students as well as the return day after they've had their amazing, amazing adventure with Rustic Pathways. So I'm excited to, uh, to talk to you guys today to answer some questions for you and to clarify some things um, that you may have already um, been thinking about. So let me tell you a little bit about what we're going to talk about today on this call. Um, so we'll, we'll first chat a little bit about Rustic, who we are, what we do, what we believe. We're going to talk about our no anxiety policy. Uh, we, we have enough anxiety in our lives. Rustic does not want to add to that for you. We want to uh, take some of that away. Um, we're going to talk about the before you travel pieces of information that you'll need to have and things that you'll need to take care of. Um, we are going to focus on that travel day, obviously, but we're also going to talk about when your student arrives in country. Um, we're going to answer those questions, like Anna said, um, and then at the end, there'll be a little survey that you'll be able to take before you log off. Um, like Anna said, if you do have questions, please um, log those as they come up. Uh, Karina will answer those as we go along. There may be some that we'll answer together at the end of this call, but please don't hold them till the end. Write them in that in that question box as you're thinking about them. Um, you know, my, my brain, you know, at this time of night uh, on the East Coast uh, is a little foggy, so I know if, if you're like me, you're going to want to write it down while you're thinking about it. So definitely uh, log those questions. But let's kick this off talking a little bit about who we are at Rustic Pathways. So like I said, I have worked in educational student travel for a long time, and I got to tell you, I have not worked for an organization quite like Rustic yet. Uh, Rustic exists at the intersection of education, travel, and philanthropy. Travel's at the core of what we do, and we believe that it should be an essential part of every education. Travel changes our trajectories. It aids in the creation of those <sighs> those non-cognitive skills, those things like grit and independence and self-awareness that are really the best indicators of future success, but also characteristics like humility and empathy. We are a mission-driven company. We believe in creating opportunities for students and benefiting the communities where we work. We do that by developing long-term relationships with our community partners and working together to identify and support year-round operations in those communities. So not just for the little bit of time that we're there during the summer, but year-round. And your students contribute to that. They are a part of the work that we do there. Uh, as does our nonprofit, the Rustic Pathways Foundation. So that's who we are at Rustic. So you were probably wondering when I mentioned it, what is this no anxiety policy that you're talking about, Jen? What is this all about? So our no anxiety escrow policy allows you to cancel for any reason up until the day of travel and escrow 100% of the program fees for up to two years from the cancellation date. We also offer families the option of purchasing a cancellation waiver to cancel their child's trip as little as three days before the scheduled departure. I know it sounds too good to be true. It is not. So again, that, that, es that no anxiety escrow policy exists. So you can cancel for any reason up until the day of travel and, and save, save that travel. Save what you've, what you've put down on, on, that, uh, on that trip um, for up to two years from the cancellation date. And then we also over offer cancellation waivers. So for more information about cancellation waivers and the no anxiety policy, Check, check this out on our website, all right? It's at rusticpathways.com forward slash cancellation dash policy. Now, we know you guys are new to Rustic, so 
we wouldn't be awesome if we didn't uh, throw out an offer. So because you're new, we wanted to offer you 10% off any summer program if you enroll in the next 48 hours. Anna has put an enrollment link in our chat box. So under the question box uh, is a chat box. Um, and if you click on that link or cut and paste it and put it in your browser in the next 48 hours, you will get a 10% discount off any summer 2017 program. So if you're not enrolled already, this, this is the way to go. 10% off, that's the way to do it. But let's, let's dive in. Let's really talk about all the good stuff that you you came here to talk about. Um, after a student enrolls, we send them a link to a custom portal with pre-trip checklist of forms and a lot of information about their specific trip. Um, so before you, tra you travel, you really want to visit this My Rustic portal and make sure that all of those pre-trip forms are completed and also check out information about your flights, your specific itinerary, as part of that itinerary, you'll be able to read some FAQs that outline some of the cultural expectations that will be a part of your trip. Some, some do's and don'ts for how to behave and, and perform in country and some other helpful information. Students should spend some time reviewing these FAQs as well as doing their own independent research about the country they're visiting. Also, as part of the portal, you want to consult the packing list and make sure you have everything you need. Waiting until the last minute to do this is a bad idea. We all know those late night trips to Target or CVS, never a good thing, especially when, when packing for a long trip. The trip itinerary on your portal includes a packing list that's customized for your specific program, not for if you were traveling to a different country with different weather in a different time zone, but for your specific program. It includes what you should have in your carry-on, what you should put in your checked luggage, and any optional items that you might want but you might not necessarily need. Students should definitely review this information several weeks before their trip to figure out what they're going to need. At the bottom of the My Rustic Portal webpage is a link to Rustic Gear. This is where you can find any of those extra fun things, a rustic jacket, a bag, sunscreen, those sort of things um, that you might also want to uh, take on your trip with you. So checking out that Rustic Gear is also a good thing. The portal also has lots of great information um, and you're also able to make sure that the information that you've entered previously is correct. Check that passport number. If you've got a new passport since you initially enrolled, make sure that that information is correct. If you purchased your domestic flight and the airline that you purchased it with has an unaccompanied minor policy. This may be something you've never heard of before, but a lot of airlines have instituted policies that say students under the age of 15 have to pay a specific fee and fill out some specific paperwork in order to fly domestically with their airline. It's basically, if they're underage and they're flying without their parents, um, the airline charges some fees and makes parents jump through some specific hoops. At Rustic Pathways, we have no control over those policies or those fees, but we will work with you to make sure that on the other end, in that domestic hub airport, we are there to pick up your student. You have the correct information to fill out the paperwork and you know how to do that. We also give you some information about how to avoid flying on uh, particular airlines that have a fairly high age for unaccompanied minors. United Airlines, for example, raised their age recently to 15 years old, um, but a lot of airlines have 14 years old and lower as the unaccompanied minor age, things like that. That information can be found on your portal, and you can also tell us, hey, we did have to uh, sign up for my student to be an unaccompanied minor. Let me tell you about that information so that you're sure you're there to meet my child when he or she arrives. All of that kind of information is on the portal. Karina, who's on this call and helping answer questions, is one of our personal travel advisors, like Anna said. She and several other PTAs at our organization work with you to answer questions about things like that. Um, about unaccompanied minors, about domestic uh, flight plans and things like that, and we'd be happy to help walk you through those kind of processes. 
Um, so be sure to check out that My Rustic portal before you travel and definitely grab some of that rustic gear. But let's talk about this travel day, right? This is why we're why we're here. This is what gets me the most excited. This is this is like I said, my wheelhouse. So the travel day may look a little bit different um, for some people. Some of you may live close enough to our one of our five hub airports to where you'll be dropping off your student. If if you're a student on this call, you'll be dropped off by your parents, and you'll be able to say goodbye in person before taking your international flight. Some of you, like me, uh, don't live anywhere near one of our five hub airports. And when you hear me saying those five hub airports, all of our international flights originate from five U.S. airports. They are Los Angeles, Houston, Miami, Newark, New Jersey, and JFK Airport in New York. Most students will be flying to those airports from their home airport, if you're anything like me. So I would say step one is probably head to the airport with your parents and say goodbye. And don't forget to wear that rustic t-shirt. You'll receive a rustic t-shirt, which really is, it's our call out. It's the distinctive. It's that thing that, that says, hey, I'm going on a rustic trip. And it also allows our airport coordinators and our flight leaders to identify you and to make sure that we get you as a, a traveling student everywhere that, that you need to be on a travel day. So make sure you're wearing that rustic t-shirt. Check in and fly to one of our five hub airports. As I said, LAX, IAH, MIA, EWR, and JFK. Those are the, sorry, airport, airport codes. Um, after you arrive in at one of those hub airports, it, it may be a little bit different for, for each of you. So if your parents drop you off, you'll connect with the rustic airport coordinator at the airline check-in desk when you arrive. Um, if you're flying in from one of those domestic airports, you'll pick up your bags and baggage claim and meet the rustic airport coordinator at the airline, airline check-in desk for your international flight. If the airline you flew on considers you to be an unaccompanied minor, it, it's kind of, you kind of get a concierge service a little bit, for better or for worse. You pay for it, but you get it. You'll be met at your arrival gate by a member of our Rustic Pathways Airport team, taken to baggage claim to get your bags, and delivered to the Rustic Airport Coordinator at the airline check-in desk for your international flight. Like I said, unaccompanied minors, um, are generally 15 years and younger, airline fees associated. And information about unaccompanied minor policies and things like that are found on the websites for specific airlines. And they can also be find, found on the Rustic Pathways website under travel information. We've listed some of, the, uh, some of the links to specific airline websites there. So let me tell you a little bit about these airport coordinators I keep mentioning. So our airport coordinators are generally current educators who enjoy spending their summer working with students in a different capacity. They are well-traveled. Many of them have worked with Rustic. Um, we consider them part of our Rustic crew. Um, they've been program leaders. They've been flight leaders. Um, they enjoy being connected with students because they believe in the Rustic Pathways mission, vision, and values. Um, and their goal is to make sure that the airport experience is smooth and seamless for the student. Um, they meet and greet parents and students. They make sure that students have all of the documents that they need. They get them checked in for their international flight. But they also manage all of the domestic flight information to make sure that your student's flight from your home in Raleigh-Durham uh, to our domestic hub in Los Angeles is not delayed or canceled, those sort of things. Um, they check on those things um, because we want to make sure that your student is having a safe trip to us. Um, and then they get the student, like I said, checked in for that international flight and connected with their flight leader. And the flight leader is the next person that your student's going to meet. So like I said, after they check in for the international flight and drop off their luggage with the help of that airport coordinator, they're going to meet the flight leader. The flight leader is um, another seasoned educator generally, and both our flight leaders and our airport coordinators are background checked, they're trained, they're CPR and first aid certified, and they are excited um, to work with, work with the students on this particular day at the beginning of their adventure, and then also bringing them back at the end of their adventure with Rustic. 
Um, so when the airport coordinator connects the student with the flight leader, the flight leader is the one who will escort your student um, from our domestic hub airport all the way to their international destination in country. Um, and the flight leader will get the student through security, wait with them at the gate, fly all the way to country with them, and then deliver them to the country team. So after they head through security with the flight leader, you'll get a chance to meet the rest of your group as everyone begins to arrive. You'll play, play some icebreaker games, get to know each other um, as you wait for your flight, and then board the flight together. The flight leader makes sure that students have all of their documents, that they are uh, not forgetting any carry-on baggage, things like that. They also manage any homesickness, um, any actual sickness, if by chance students start to feel ill or anything like that, um, and then they do board the flight with them and take off. On the airplane itself, students are free, 100% free, to take a nap, um, read a book, watch a movie, those sort of things. The, the flight leader walks up and down the aisles, makes sure that students are feeling well, um, that they're comfortable, that they understand what the next steps will be once they arrive in country. They help the students fill out the customs and immigration forms um, that students receive on the plane with all of the correct information prior to their arrival in country. Um, and so when they do arrive, the group will exit the plane, meet as a group, before they head through immigration. Um, flight leaders are aware that for students that may have not traveled frequently internationally, uh, the customs and immigration section of any airport has a way of making us feel like we've done something wrong even if we, have, <laughs> even if we haven't. Um, it can be a little bit intimidating. So flight leaders give lots of instruction. They are there to walk the students through the process. They make sure that all the forms are, are filled out correctly, that students know where to stand, where to walk, all of those things. Um, they go through immigration with them. They help them collect their bags. Um, they assist them in turning in their customs declaration form. And then on the other side, they connect them with the program leaders in country that will help the students start their adventure. And the flight leader is there to make sure that every student is connected with the correct program leader for the correct program and that they are just as excited at the end of a very long flight journey as they were at the beginning. Um, they have an infectious personality, each specific flight leader, um, and, and they truly are excited to be a part of the beginning of this journey with your students. By the same token, these flight leaders bring your students home and so they get a chance to uh, talk to your student on the, at the end of their journey to find out if the things that they were most excited about at the start are the things that they thought they would learn, see, do uh, at the beginning. So it's all very exciting but that really is the gist of a full travel day. So we've got a couple exciting online meeting meetups coming up. Um, our top 10 student travel questions um, is coming up on Thursday, April 6th at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And our staff picks, which are the most popular rustic programs, are coming up on Tuesday, April 11th, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Um, you'll need to be enrolled by April 16th to guaranteed chaperoned flights. Now, this doesn't mean you need to be enrolled for either of these meetups. This means you'll need to, your, your student will need to be enrolled for a 2017 program by April 16th to, guarantee, to be guaranteed a chaperone flight. Now, I've been mentioning these flight leaders, and they really are uh, that, that handhold, you know, the extra, extra set of eyes, extra set of hands. They're, they're the person that's there when you are not to escort your student through this process. And so they're a really important part um, to make sure that, you, that we can put your student on a flight with a flight leader. We ask that you have them enrolled by April 16th. We have to staff our flight leaders. The flight leaders have to get, um, you know, visas and all of those sort of things. And so, um, we want to make sure that all of that is taken care of. So April 16th is that deadline for enrollment. Um, so please make sure that you take care of that in time. So at this point, we are going to open it up to some questions. I know Karina has been answering things like crazy. Well, I have been talking, but 
let's see. And Anna and Karina, if there is anything that you want to add, please feel free. Great. Thanks, Jen. Um, this is Anna. <clears throat> So Karina's been in the background here answering a bunch of questions. We have many, many more coming in. Um, I've got a lot of questions here, um, but I actually, I'm just gonna start with um, a fun one that relates to the other, um, the other webinars that we've mentioned here, just as a little bit, little bit of a teaser, but we had one question come in, where have you all gone so far? Um, <clears throat> which is which is always a fun question for us here at Rustic. Um, I think most people who work at Rustic work here because we love travel, are passionate about providing this experience for students at a young age and kind of giving them the opportunity for that personal growth that, that Jen was mentioning um, at a really transformational time um, in their own personal development. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna answer this question um, here and while I'm doing so, Karina, if you could um, send some of the questions that you have um, com compiled here across to Jen, um, she'll be able to, to answer them as well. Um, so, Klashana, this is a question in from you. Um, when I started with Rustic Pathways, I started um, with a program um, in Thailand um, as, as a staff. Um, and I was at our rice fields base, and then I also spent some time during that period um, in Laos at our Mekong base and at our children's home base. Um, so became really familiar with the programs um, that we were running at that time in 2010, a long time ago, um, in Southeast Asia. Um, I then started working in China um, and spent a while as our China country director. Um, we don't run all of the same programs in China anymore, but there are a handful of programs that are very similar to um, when I was our China country director. Um, since then, I've been, I've actually flight led to Fiji. Um, I've traveled to the Dominican Republic for programs a couple of times and then also once as a flight leader. Um, and I flight led and also led programs in Ghana when we were running programs there um, and have done the same in Costa Rica as well. Um, so a sampling of locations all over the world um, and I can definitely say that each each destination comes with its own set of really incredible things and its own set of um, eye-opening experiences. Um, so wherever you or your student are sign, signed up for or signing up for, um, I'm sure that will be your experience as well. All right, so I've got a few questions here. So Linda asked, do we need to include that we are driving to the hub? Yes, on the portal, um, they'll ask, how are you getting uh, to our hub airport? And there's a drop down menu, you know, so we're flying or we're, you know, that sort of thing. And um, so yes, if you can include that information for us, that is important. We would hate to be waiting for uh, a flight to arrive and you have dropped off your student and he's been sitting downstairs or you know something like that. We also provide contact information to you for airport coordinators. Um, so you, you'll have a cell phone number and that sort of thing for the airport coordinator so no one ever does end up just kind of sitting downstairs somewhere unless they don't think to call the airport coordinator and say hey I'm here. Um, but yeah it's, it is very important we would definitely like to know if you are doing uh, a drop off if, if students are being dropped off. Yep. And, and I can say, um, yeah. from, from that perspective, as a flight leader, having flight led many times, um, it's really nice to know where kids are coming from and if they're going to show up with their parents and if I should watch for arriving flights um, for which I have a student's flight information or if I should be watching the doors to see that kid walk through kind of the entrance to the airport. Um, and also, uh, as a flight leader, I will proactively reach out, and, and other flight leaders will as well, we will proactively reach out if a kid has not arrived by the time that we anticipate them, whether they're coming with their parents or um, flying in on a connecting flight. Um, so, you know, in my experience, all of the students that I have traveled with really want to get where they're going. They're really excited to get there, to get to their program and to have this experience that they've been looking forward to for a long time. And they're pretty communicative. Um, and on the flip side, I really want to make sure that every single kid that I am traveling with has a smooth experience and um, is there and goes through security without trouble in plenty of time and you know can get a snack before they get on the flight and get to meet all the other kids that are on their flight. So, um, 
you know, I think it's, it's this really nice synergy of both students wanting to get where they're going and also the staff being totally engaged and communicative and making sure that their, um, their kids are all in the right place at the right time. Absolutely. Um, Ed asked, are t-shirts mailed to students? Indeed, they are. Um, another important part of going onto the portal is to make sure that your address is correct, that it's an address where you would want that um, pre-travel package mailed. Um, so, yep, going onto the portal and checking that that information is correct so that when we mail the t-shirt, it gets to you. A few people have asked, do I need to grab my bags when flying into the hub? And this answer is different for different people. So if the international flight, for example, is a United flight, but your domestic flight from your home in Raleigh-Durham to our hub in JFK was an American Airlines flight, yes. American Airlines is probably not going to check your flight, your bags all the way through onto a United International flight. So yeah, you're probably going to need to go down to the baggage claim, grab your domestic, you know, bags off of your domestic flight, bring them upstairs, you know, to the ticketing level. Um, you may need to change terminals, things like that um, as well, and have them rechecked. Um, that said, if you um, booked a United domestic flight and the international flight is domestic as well, they will likely check you all the way through um, and it won't be a problem. So it does depend. Um, someone asks, where do we pick up tickets for international destinations? So you, um, if you are flying on Rustic Pathways airfare, you are part of a group block of tickets. And so you, there are no paper tickets being sent to you. You will be sent um, an e-ticket. Um, it will be emailed to you. Um, and that information um, comes prior to travel. Um, so you don't need to pick anything up anywhere. And someone asked a question about frequent flyer numbers. Yes, if you have a frequent flyer number, you provide that to the airline um, at the time of check-in for your international flight. Um, a lot of airlines do code sharing and things like that, so um, we don't, don't do any of that in advance, um, but you may certainly do that at check-in time, provide those sort of information, uh, that sort of information, sorry. Jessica asked, how many hours before our flight do we need to be at the hub? Four hours. Um, we recommend four hours prior to your international flight, and we will provide you with those all of that exact information um, in in communication that you'll receive from your personal travel advisor. Um, it will say, "Please arrive at this time." Here's the airport coordinator. You know, here is phone number information, that sort of thing, um, and we'll tell you where to meet and things like that in the airport. Um, so a question about how to meet with the airport coordinator. So, all right. So every, um, each of our five airports actually has two airport coordinators um, because on a given day we have departures leaving for different countries. And so airport coordinators are managing um, departures for perhaps India and Costa Rica, you know, on the same day. So they will be at the check-in desk for India and they'll be at the check-in desk for Costa Rica. So you are going to likely be heading to um, the international airline desk. Um, so ticketing, the ticketing level um, is where you're going to be heading. And that's where the airport coordinator will be meeting you to help you get checked in um, and that sort of thing. Um, what our airport coordinators do is while students are flying on their domestic flight or first thing in the morning when airport coordinators arrive, they uh, leave voicemail messages for students to say, hey, Sally, um, I know that you are currently flying on your domestic flight to get here to JFK where you're going to meet me. Um, my name is uh, Samantha and I am your airport coordinator here at JFK. Um, when you arrive, please feel free to call or text me at this number. Um, you can meet me. I'll be here. So they, they check in with your student. Um, if by chance you have provided in the information on the portal your cell phone number as a parent instead of a student number and they get you, you can just call them back and say, oh, hey, this is, this is actually Sally's mom. Her cell phone number is this, you know, that sort of thing. Um, but yes, it's at the ticketing counter um, so that we can get you ticketed for your um, your international flight, get you all checked in, get your boarding pass, that sort of thing. 
and all of that information. Uh, the phone number will be sent out in your travel info, um, which comes out a week before departure. So you'll have phone number for the airport coordinator um, in that travel info. Anything else? Those are some fantastic questions. Thank you. Very thorough. Um, so I'm, this is Anna again. Um, we do have a bunch of additional questions here. Um, thank you all for, for sending so many of these across. A lot of them are related to individual programs. Um, and we, we have all of them logged with your names. We're going to follow up with each of you um, after this call, either later this evening or tomorrow, to make sure that we can answer each of your questions um, and get you all of the information that you may have. Um, so at this point, we're going to wrap up um, the webinar. Um, Jen, thank you so much for walking us through all of that. It's always, you know, I, I feel like I've had the opportunity to experience a lot of this firsthand, but it's always so refreshing to kind of walk through it again and hear how it all works and be reminded like, yes, the summer is coming and I'm so excited. Um, so I hope many of you on this call feel the same way. Um, again, if you've put in a question that hasn't been answered yet, we will follow up with you individually and get you an answer. Um, if you have a question that you haven't typed in yet and you want to, feel free to. We'll log that and follow up with you. If not, you can email us at rustic at rusticpathways.com. Um, if you already have been in touch with someone at Rustic, either your personal travel advisor or anyone else, um, feel free to email that person directly and they'll follow up with you as well. Um, and um, we really look forward to having each and every one of you um, on a program this coming summer. Um, so thanks again for taking your time out this evening. I know it's uh, after dinner on the East Coast, just about getting to dinner here on the West Coast where I am. Um, so thank you all for making time for this. This webinar has been recorded. It will be posted on our website. Um, that will happen in the next 48 hours or so. Um, so if you do want to watch it again, if you have a parent who couldn't make it to this call um, or a friend who's traveling or you want them to travel and you're not, you haven't quite been able to explain how it all works, feel free to head to our website and you'll be able to find this under our um, webinar recordings and share this with everyone you know. Um, so thanks again, everyone, and uh, we look forward to having you this summer.